How you doing, partner? What's going on, everybody? Happy Thanksgiving Eve. Tap in, tap in, tap in. This would be like 10 minutes long, but this really needs to get shared out. This is like a catastrophe, a pure catastrophe. <clears throat> uh, hundreds, 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 hundreds of workers, hundreds of members are being kicked off of FMLA as we speak. Hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of members are being kicked off of FMLA as we speak illegally illegally just to be clear all the thoughts and views expressed in this live are those solely of mine and not to be represented by the MTA New York City Transit Local 100 or any one of their affiliates happy Wednesday this is um this is terrible so let the train pass. Please, if you're seeing this live, share it as often as you can. Uh, there's some real serious stuff going on between work partners and the MTA uh, in regards to everybody's FMLA if you have FMLA excuse me if you have FMLA for a family member if you take care of a sick loved one if you have someone that you have FMLA for that you are taking care of currently it would behoove you to check ASAP to see if you are still active on the roll again boy them trains just be rolling through here them trains just be rolling through here the uh, if you have FMLA for a family member or yourself and you had the FMLA prior to be in transition to the new company work partners it is very very important that you verify that you are still active on that FMLA role transit authority the MTA has selectively kicked people off closed their FMLA breaking the law they have willingly selected members and close their FMLA account. There are so many layers to what has just happened or what they're actually doing. It would take three hours to legally break down every law that they have broken. So I'm going to give you just my experience and what has happened in the course of, uh, of the current week just because I'm aware of how this is affecting hundreds of other members because in the course of my investigation and addressing this issue or tackling this issue, I've come to find out that transit is actually doing this because no one's stopping them. So some point this week, I attempted to call out FMLA for myself, actually for my wife, excuse me. And I was told that the account for my wife had been closed. So I asked, well, that must be impossible because it has just been renewed in August. So how is it possible that it could be closed? The representative from Work Partners stated, well, that the MTA closed it by accident or that Work Partners closed it by accident and that neither one of them could identify why it had been closed, but 
that what they're finding is that hundreds of members, for some strange reason, have had their FMLA closed. And that the problem can be solved very easily if they just send you new paperwork and you take their paperwork and have their paperwork filled out to reestablish your FMLA. Let me say that again. They are attempting to close your account that you have followed procedure that you have legally submitted, that you have legally have approved, which you legally have active, a federal benefit, where you have re legally received a letter from the transit authority identifying that your FMLA is active for whatever specific time, be it September 20 till September 21 for one year. And the transit authority and work partners are now closing those accounts and telling members that they should take new paperwork from the new company and get that paperwork filled out in an attempt in an attempt to disenfranchise you in an attempt to make you utilizing your federal provision harder that is the equivalent of voter suppression to suppress your rights that is their intentions to actually break the law. They are attempting to break the law. Excuse me. They have broken the law. They have broken the law. The second that they suggest. That your legally binding document. Your HIPAA protected documents are being overruled by an administrator, unknown administrator, who is choosing to suggest that whatever you have on the books is not valid today, so that you should then tomorrow go get a new paper and use the new company's procedures because they want to make the process a little more difficult for you. Because they want to suppress your rights. So if, you, if you're aware that tomorrow is Thanksgiving and that we're in the holiday season, you can understand how this is even possible. So they are attempting to kick people off of FMLA at a time when they believe people will use FMLA more aggressively. And therefore, if for some reason when you call in, and say, hi, I want to take care of my sick loved one because they might be sick at the moment and I am their caretaker and it is my responsibility to provide care for the sick loved one. They tell you, sorry, you can't because it's not active. And then you say, oh my God, what am I going to do? So you might go to work. At that moment, think about the decision that you are making. They are trying, they are playing Russian roulette with your loved one's chronic illness. In other words, if you have a family member who has chronic asthma or who has chronic hypertension or who has chronic diabetes and at the moment you're getting dressed and getting ready to go to work and they look at you and they say, babe, honey, son, mom, dad, I feel really sick. I need to take a treatment. I need to take a steroid. I need you to take care of the kids. And you say, no problem. I got you. It's fine. Sit down. Hook up the nebulizers to your face. Let me take care of the kids. Let me make sure you're safe and that you're not going to have to go to the emergency room. But first, let me do my due diligence and call the job. Hi, how you doing? This is operator so-and-so. I'm going FMLA today for a family member. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, we closed that yesterday. What? Yeah, we don't know why it was closed. Actually, we think it's an accident on the computer, but you're going to have to call back and speak to somebody from um, lead, a lead specialist sometime this week. And then they'll try to uh, give you new paperwork and then you can take that and get, get it resubmitted because it's just easier that way. Because if we have to actually find out what went wrong, it might take longer. So then the next question was, well, who's responsible for this? We have no idea. The transit authority did it is what they told me. Okay, so let's ask the transit authority. Transit authority said it's work partners that they made the mistake. Now, K 
keep in mind, all of this information we are referencing is protected under HIPAA laws, meaning that there are so many layers to the criminality that is being attempted that I don't even know who to go to in regards to how high of, of the legal infraction that they have possessed or intended. There's that magical train again. Guys, please share this video because I promise you, I have spoken to almost every chain of command in regards to this issue. And there are so many members being affected by this right now and they're just complying. Literally, they're telling members, oh, sorry, we don't know why your case is closed, but here, just fill out some new paperwork and take it back to your doctor. No, that is absolutely what you should not do. <laughs> <laughs> because they're breaking the law. They cannot make you resubmit something that was already accepted. Keep in mind, every document you submit to the transit authority is a legal, excuse me, is a legal binded document. In other words, if you submit something in July and you falsified that FMLA form, if you put a doctor's signature and it wasn't a doctor, you will be fired. If you filled out a form, an FMLA form, that had information on it that was not valid, that you embellished, or if you signed something, or if you put anything there that is not valid, or misrepresented the truth on that FMLA form. If you said, my loved one is a diabetic, and they're not. If you said the doctor's name is so, 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 so and for, you put a signature on that paper in July, prior to being transitioned to the new company, and they found out in December, you would be fired. Therefore, that document is binding. That document cannot be replaced because you feel like it. Whatever submission, whatever paperwork you submitted, when and if it was approved, I wouldn't give a damn if 14 companies took possession of that paperwork moving forward. The original one is the standard bearer. Nobody for the course of that document and its approval gets to circumvent it without two things, going to the court of law and notifying you that it's actually gonna happen. The transit authority does not get to make Uh, hold on, I'm reading something, I apologize Kylie Dash, may I inquire that if all calls are recorded by either you and them at the time of calling for FMLA By their admission, does that exist? Would it suffice to still call out and not be penalized? So, I just want to let you know, when I call the second they told me that there was some questionable stuff going on with my FMLA that I know is valid, I recorded them. And at any point that any of you would like to have a copy of that recording, I'd be more than happy to, to send it to you. Uh, don't worry, this is going to get fun. This is going to get fun. Because I assure you that the more I push, at some point they're going to concede and identify the fact that they, what they're doing is wrong and illegal and all of that. But there's still hundreds of members that are complying and just being led astray and willingly allowing their rights to be violated by someone who's breaking the law. Now, this is, I've struggled with this all week because I don't even know, I'm telling you, I can't, I can't bring my mind I cannot bring my mind to truly grasp the amount of energy I have to exhaust just to protect my legal rights from my employer. This is overwhelming. So then the next question I asked is, well, 
We knew that this company was brought in because they were specialists at kicking people off of FMLA. We didn't know what their tactics were as of yet, but we knew this is their claim to fame. This company, Work Partners, was brought in to kick people off of FMLA. That is their, that was what they were hired to do. Our employer brought in a vendor whose specialty, whose tactical specialty is to get people removed from their benefit. Here's that train. MTA always at work. So here goes the question. We knew that this company was coming here to attack us, to violate us, to abuse us, to disrespect us. Where is one of those special committees that were entrenched in our contract? Where is the FMLA committee? Who is watching this company and holding the MTA to task and making sure that the transition of our most our most important private legal documents are being properly protected in the in the in the process of the transport of information from our HR department to a new vendor who, where, or what is the department that is responsible for guaranteeing the transition of those documents to be done safely? Who is there guaranteeing that the benefits that are federally protected, that our rights as employees and as human beings and as citizens are being met between the transit authority and a company who was brought here to steal our rights? Who from the union do you speak to about that? What part, what division, what area is fighting against this abuse? Guys, please share this out. Anybody you know, please, if anybody has called FMLA and has been told that their account is either closed or there's an issue or they weren't able to use it and they know for sure that it's valid, please share it. Please share it. Send it, send it, send it because this conversation is not going away. I promise you, I've already gotten to the fourth phone call up the ladder to where everybody's blaming someone else at this point now and we're not letting them off the hook on this one. This is illegal. This is a violation of our rights. And I'm gonna fight this tooth and nail um, because it's disgusting. It is disgusting. That we need to literally do lives. We literally need to do group chats we literally have to call and spend hours on the phone because we are having our rights violated when we have a union that's job it is to protect us. And just so we're clear, I went to member services today and was told that it's my responsibility to contact the Department of Labor. That that's what I should do because everything the transit authority is doing is illegal, but the union doesn't really have a part in that. So it is my responsibility to then call a lawyer and make sure that whatever has been identified in regards to what they're doing is challenged at every cost. So just so we're clear, the first part of it was, one, they can't kick you off. That is illegal. The second part of it is, if they are uh, attempting If they are attempting to suggest that a document that you submitted that was approved, that is considered legally binding, can be withdrawn 
at the beckoning of the transit authority, then it will be that everyone who has ever gotten terminated or penalized for falsifying a document should have the right to therefore then retract that document and submit a new one just so that they can put the proper information on that document. And you also have to assume that the transit authority, by doing so, by closing specific accounts, are selectively discriminating against their workforce. Now, we or they, politicians, talk about how they hate Donald Trump because he doesn't respect the rule of law. So I'm going to ask our governor, I'm going to ask our interim president, our interim president, I'm going to ask Sarah Feinberg, Pat Foy, uh, Andrew Cuomo, where does the rule of law stand for, for the employees of the MTA? Are we absolved from the rule of law? Is the rule of law too good for the people who reflect the citizens of New York? Where do our legal rights stand on the totem pole of legitimacy? Are our needs not legitimate enough that our federal benefit, when I'm standing there taking care of a sick loved one, I have to worry if I'm going to get fired because someone chose that it was more convenient to kick me off of my federal benefit so they can reach their quota before the end of the year? Because they know a certain amount of people are going to use FMLA in the course of a year. Could you imagine what would happen if transit, playing a game of hide and seek with our federal benefit, could you imagine what would happen if in the course of playing hide and seek with our federal benefit, if an employee forced to go to work instead of taking care of someone who's sick in their household, if that sick loved one missing the care of that employee ends up dying because dad had to run to work because transit told him his benefit wasn't active even though it was. And instead of being home and present at the time that that loved one might have needed them to save their life, he is in the depot, he is in the station, making a quota. You disgust me. Share this out. I gotta go back to work. We all we got.